Hello, I am Ahmad and in this video we are going to talk about asymmetric cross-section and how to calculate the section modulus as well as uh, calculation of plastic bending moment. Let's do it. Uh, earlier in the other video we talked about the section modulus, uh, elastic and plastic section modulus. Let's recap what we learned. If we have a cross section and the neutral axis can be divided to two conditions, elastic neutral axis and plastic neutral axis. If we have a symmetric cross section, these two are in the same level. And if there is a cross section which is asymmetric, then we need to define each one. The difference is that for the elastic neutral axis, we usually use y bar equals sigma ai times yi divided by sigma ai. Also, we can say that the summation of first moment of inertia from the top of the neutral axis is the same as summation of first moment of inertia in the bottom side. But for calculation of uh, plastic neutral axis, we need to write down sigma area of top of that axis is the same as sigma area of bottom. So we should consider that the plastic neutral axis with the given equation is only valid when we have the material homogeneous with similar uh, behavior, intention, and compression. There will be another video after this uh, video that I will talk about the homogeneous material, which the behavior of material is, di is uh, different in tension and compression. So for now, here we assume that the material is the same in tension and compression, and we go through that. So as I said, if we have symmetric uh, cross section, then uh, neutral axis will be the same for elastic and plastic analyzers. But when we have asymmetric cross section, then it would be different. Let's have a cross section and calculate these two. Suppose we have I section with the top flange, which is 160 by 16 millimeter thickness. And then we have a web with let's say 240 millimeter with the thickness of 8 millimeter for the web and finally we have bottom flange which is 80 millimeter and 16 millimeter thickness the calculation of elastic neutral axis is determined by sigma a i y i divided by sigma a i and we need to consider a baseline here I assume that the baseline is on the top. As you know, the area of the top flange will be 160 times 16, and the distance from the center of this rectangle to the baseline is 8 millimeter. Plus, then we have 240 millimeter times 8 millimeter. I can write down. And the distance from the center to the baseline is half of 240 plus 16. And then for the bottom flange, 80 millimeter times 16 millimeter. And then from the center to the baseline will be 16 millimeter plus 240 millimeter plus half of 16. And the area 160 times 16 plus 240 times 8 plus 80 times 16. 107.6 millimeter is the center of the elastic neutral axis center to the baseline. Uh, it is wise if always we check if the answer is reasonable. So let's uh, sketch the elastic neutral axis and here this is 107.6. So as far as the top flange is with bigger area compared to the bottom flange, we expect that it is closer to the top. So if we consider the mid 
height of the cross section it will be 120 plus 16 which is 136 millimeter and now because the top flange is bigger than the bottom flange it is closer to the top so the answer is reasonable but for the same cross section if we are looking for plastic neutral axis then it's different because we need to find out at what elevation the area of top equals to the area of bottom so for this uh, for example if you have a T section for example or other sections it is better if we calculate what is the area of the parts that we assume it should be in the top of the neutral axis or in the bottom so here I assume that uh, as far as we have I section the plastic neutral axis should be somewhere in the web but always it is better if we calculate what is the area of each part so here area of the top flange will be 160 times 16 to 560 square millimeter the bottom flange will be 80 times 16 128 0 square millimeter and the web will be 240 times 8 1920 square millimeter so here we can see that the top flange has 2560 and bottom 1280 and if we add the entire web area to the bottom flange it will be more than 2560 vice versa if we add web area to the top flange it will be more than 1280 as a result uh, the plastic neutral axis should be somewhere in the web so we assume that the neutral axis is somewhere here and you can just assume that okay this height is y from the 240 millimeter of the web height y millimeter is going to be in the top of plastic neutral axis and the rest will be in the bottom of that so now we can write down that for plastic neutral axis we need to find out where a of top is the same as a of bottom so for this a of top will be 2560 square millimeter from top flange plus 8 millimeter times y and the bottom it will be 1280 square millimeter plus 8 millimeter times 240 millimeter minus y this is 240 minus y and then we need to apply the equation so 2560 square millimeter plus 8 times y equals to 1280 plus 8 times 240 millimeter minus y and then y will be 40 millimeter so the plastic neutral axis from the baseline we assumed earlier will be 56 we can see that it is uh, not in the same level as elastic neutral axis so if we sketch the cross section and let's assume that this is 160 so it will be one two three four and then we have 16 millimeter the thickness of the flange 240 millimeter for the web height and 16 millimeter for bottom flange 160 millimeter for the top flange width and 80 millimeter for the other flange so now 107.6 so here 120 everything is 40 40 80 56 somewhere here 107.6 millimeter and this is elastic neutral axis and for the elastic neutral axis it is located in the distance of 56 millimeter from the base 40 millimeter from the height of the uh, web plus 16 millimeter for the flange thickness now for calculation of uh, section modulus we calculate according to the given equation for elastic section modulus which is 
elastic section modulus moment of inertia or second moment of inertia divided by c and for plastic section modulus sigma a times y area times the distance from the center of the part to the plastic neutral axis in both sides so first of all we need to calculate the second moment of inertia of this cross section 160 times 16 over by 3 divided by 12 plus 160 times 16 times the center to center which is 107.6 minus 8 millimeter over by 2 and then the web 8 times 240 over by 3 divided by 12 plus 8 times 240 times now the distance between these two the elevation here is 120 plus 16 136 and then the bottom flange 80 times 16 over by 3 divided by 12 plus 80 times 16 times this is 240 plus 16 256 plus 8 264 and now moment of inertia will be 6.75 10 power by 7 millimeter power by 4 and for w elastic if uh, the material in tension and compression is limited to the yield stress and the yield stress is the same is always calculated with the minimum w elastic meaning that you need to find out what is the maximum c c represents the furthest distance of the cross section towards the elastic neutral axis so here the top c of top is 107.6 and then c of bottom can be calculated by deduction of this value from the total height of the cross section so c bottom will be 240 plus 16 plus 16 minus 107.6 and it will be 164.4 so for the calculation always we are looking for w elastic minimum which is moment of inertia divided by c max so here c max is c of bottom so it will be 6.75 10 power by 7 divided by 164.4 millimeter 4.1 10 power by 5 millimeter power by 3 so that is uh, elastic section modulus but for plastic section modulus we need to calculate with different equation so for the plastic neutral axis and also plastic section modulus it is easier if we write down what is the area of each part and also their distance to the plastic neutral axis so this is part number one this part is number two in the bottom this is part number three and the bottom flange is part number four so for part number one area is 160 times 16 256 zero a square millimeter and y for number one now this uh, distance is representing from the center to the plastic neutral axis not to the elastic one so here for example we can see that this is y1 and it's 56 minus 8 48 millimeter part number two area is 40 millimeter times 8 millimeter 32 or a square millimeter and y will be the center of this part to the plastic neutral axis which is 20 millimeter part number three so the total height of the web is 240 and 40 millimeter is already uh, on the top of plastic neutral axis as a result the remaining of the web height will be 200 millimeter so area will be 200 times 8 and y3 will be half of this length towards plastic neutral axis so it is 100 millimeter and part number four which is the bottom flange 
which is uh, 80 times 16 and it is 128.0 square millimeter and the distance will be 200 plus 8 208 millimeter now we can easily calculate w plastic which is sigma a i y i so a1 y a1 plus a2 y2 a3 y3 plus a4 y4 5.55 10 power by 5 millimeter power by 3 so we can compare this value with the elastic section modulus which was 4.1 and here we have 5.5 now let's uh, have a look what would happen in the cross section when we increase the bending moment from plastic behavior until it is completely plastic so when it's in elastic phase the neutral axis is here let it go to, with the same color and when the cross section is subjected to bending moment then it starts to behave completely in elastic manner so the stress distribution will be completely linear as far as the neutral axis is closer to the top flange then as you can see in the furthest distance which is in the bottom flange we would expect that the stress is bigger than the other flange so when we increase the bending moment then the first point that would become yield or plastic is the bottom flange so as a result when we are talking about w elastic and why we consider the maximum distance from the neutral axis or elastic neutral axis is that uh, the stress in elastic phase is uh, greater in the furthest edge so here if we apply m in the maximum value m of y then sigma in the furthest distance towards elastic neutral axis will be sigma y and as a result the other flange is still in the linear phase or in elastic now if we want to increase the bending moment then the bottom flange cannot take any more stress as a result the stress in that level remains constant and instead it starts to yield other fibers of the cross section closer to the neutral axis until the other flange is also yield so as a result to keep the cross section in balance phase meaning that the total force in compression equals to total load in the tension so the neutral axis is going to change we will go through one example after this video to check how we can calculate the uh, neutral axis in partial plastic cross section so until it comes to the location that the plastic neutral axis is located which is in this case here for example and in this level the entire cross section is plastic sigma y as well as the other side how to calculate the uh, plastic moment and elastic moment we went through this earlier in the other video and we know how to calculate them so here this is m plastic so m elastic is always w elastic times sigma y and m plastic is w plastic times sigma y so if we assume sigma y is 250 megapascal for example for this example then w elastic was 4.1 10 power by 5 times 250 megapascal so it will be 102 kilonewton meter and it was w plastic was 5.55 and power by 5 times 250 megapascal 137.5 kilonewton meter and if the bending moment is less than elastic bending moment then it's in elastic phase if it is greater than uh, m elastic 
for a while then it is partial plastic and when it becomes m plastic which is 137.5 kilonewton meter then it's fully plastic so that's how to calculate elastic and plastic section modulus as well as the neutral axis for each case that's the end of this video we went through the calculation of elastic and plastic neutral axis as well as section modulus in both cases for asymmetric cross section and also calculation of elastic and plastic bending moment for a homogeneous material which the behavior is the same in tension and compression thank you for watching see you next time bye